This content is brought to you by Algorand, which is building the future of finance. Algorand is one of the leading projects in the crypto industry. It is getting significant adoption and investments. This content is also brought to you by Taxbit, which is the leading tax service provider in the crypto industry. I'm personally a Taxbit user. It makes it so easy to plug in my exchange accounts and calculate my crypto gains and losses. So if you'd like to learn more about Algorand and Taxbit, please visit the links in the description of the podcast and YouTube video. Welcome back to the Thinking Crypto Podcast, your home for cryptocurrency news and interviews. With me today is Joe Hall, who's a former SEC official and partner at Davis Polk and Wardwell. Joe, it's great to have you back on the show. Hi, Tim. Uh, Joe, there's a lot to go through with the SEC crypto regulations uh, and, and there's a lot of details, uh, but I would like to start with the macro view, get your perspective as a former SEC official. Um, how do you feel the SEC is currently doing as it relates to regulating the crypto market and this new technology? It's a great question. I mean, I, I think the SEC honestly is, is trying here um, with the tools that they have. Um, and I think but I think the, the problem is the tools that they have um, were not designed uh, for crypto. Um, you know, they, they just weren't. Um, and, and yet um, we, we're, we're struggling right now to come up with a new construct for this space. Um, and, you know, if you're the SEC, you're, 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 you're given, you know, three or four basic tools, you know, the Securities Act of 1933, the Securities Exchange Act of 1934, and the Investment Company Act of 1940. Um, you're just saying the names, you can tell that, that, that these are statutes that have been around for an awful long time. Um, and the SEC is, is trying to figure out how to, they're, lo they're looking out and they're seeing um, investment activity. Um, and they're, they're, they're trying to figure out how to protect investors um, with these tools that were, were, were created you know, 80 years ago. And I don't think it's going too well. Um, uh, I don't fault the SEC necessarily for this. Um, uh, I, I think the, the, the problem is, is broader. Um, and I am pleased to see a lot of um, interest on Capitol Hill um, in, uh, in crypto and in the application of our existing regulatory frameworks to crypto. Um, but ultimately, I think that's where, that's where, the, the, um, where the problem needs to be solved is with Congress coming in and saying, um, you know, there's a, an asset class here that's two or $3 trillion. Um, our existing regulatory framework does not work for it. And I can, I can explain very simply why it doesn't work. Um, you know, we have a situation right now where everybody is focused on this basic question of, is the token a security? Is it a security? I mean, that's obviously the heart of the of, of the case against Ripple. Um, is XRP a security? Um, but just take a generic token. You know, we ask that question: Is it a security? If the answer is yes, it's a security, then we regulate it out of existence. Um, it, it it becomes impossible, virtually impossible. Um, to, to trade it on a peer-to-peer -peer basis or to trade it using blockchain rails. Um, it becomes very difficult to custody. Um, uh, it, it, it just, they, it, the, the, the token basically becomes um, not usable for its intended purpose. So that's what happens when the answer to um, uh, the question is yes, it's a security. On the other hand, if the answer is no, it's not a security, then suddenly it's pretty much unregulated. Um, and you know that has appeal for some people, I think, but I think it's not realistic to think that you can have you know, two or $3 trillion in assets 
sloshing around um, with a lot of retail participation and, and not think that there are going to be some you know, basic you know, consumer protection laws because or consumer protection uh, made available to it. Because at the end of the day, the securities laws are simply consumer protection laws. Um, you know, they're there to protect investors. Um, they're there to, to, to facilitate capital raising. Um, uh, but they're, they're, they're there to make sure the capital raising is done in a way that um, is, is fair to, to people who put in their life savings into it. Um, and, and so right now we, we just have this, this dichotomy whether where it's, if it's a security, we regulate it out of existence. And if it's not a security, it's anything goes. That's just not tenable, um, I don't think. Um, and, and if you're the SEC, you know, whose mission is to protect investors, it's very clear where you're going to be spending your, your time and effort. Um, so I think Congress needs to step in and say, um, look, the securities laws um, uh, do a very good job at what they're intended to do, um, which is to regulate you know, debt and equity capital raising. Um, they don't do a very good job, unfortunately. Um, and you know, it shouldn't be a surprise because they weren't designed for it. Um, at regulating this this new asset class, um, and and so Congress can come in and say we're going to create a different regulatory structure for crypto, um, and it would it would it would have a lot of the same tenets of of the federal securities laws. I think there would be an emphasis on disclosure. Um, there would be an emphasis on transparency. Um, there would be an emphasis on making sure that the the, the trading markets um, uh, uh, work well. Um, uh, and, and I think all that would be good, um, but it just wouldn't sort of take the second step and say, well, these have to be treated like securities in all, in all cases. Um, you know, we need, we need a registration statement with audit financial statements of somebody. Um, we need to only allow these assets to be traded on the New York Stock Exchange or on NASDAQ. Um, you know, so, but Congress can do that. You know, Congress can come in and make these changes, but you can't, you can't expect that the regulatory agencies themselves will in the absence of, of guidance from Congress. You know, that's a great point because I've honestly heard Chairman Genser say something along those lines in passing. Uh -huh. You know, he said, these are the rules Congress put forth and they're very broad. And, and I, I, I've, talked about that, you know, I've given credit for saying that because he is saying the onus is on Congress to change the laws. Um, so on that note, you know, Commissioner Hester Peirce has suggested the framework called a crypto safe harbor. Um, do you think that is a, a framework that maybe Congress could adopt and integrate into a new regulatory framework? Well, I, I think Commissioner, Commissioner Peirce has, has, you know, she's regularly a, um, just a source of, of, of fresh thinking um, in the space, which um, you know, those of us who practice in the space are forever grateful to her. Um, and and I, I think her, her um, proposed safe harbor you know, would, be a, would be a benefit, um, um, uh, but her, her safe harbor is designed within the current framework. Um, and if we have to live with the current framework, you know, uh, something along the lines of her safe harbor, I think would be quite useful. Um, my point, and, and maybe it goes back to what you were saying, you know, Chair Gensler has, has, has been saying, my, my point is that we shouldn't be using the existing framework. Well, that, that should not be our starting point. That should be our reference point. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think that we should um, take a step back and say, um, okay, what, what are these assets actually? How are these assets actually being used? What's the purpose of these assets? What are the, what, what sorts of information do investors in these assets um, need to have? Um, who, should we, who should we put liability on to ensure that investors get the information that they need about these assets um, to the extent that the investors want them? Um, and, you know, again, I, I don't think the SEC is in a very good position to sort of broaden the frame um, and, and, and try to figure out, you know, exactly how we should be regulating this new asset class. That's just not the agency's job. Um, 
um, it's not their mission. It's not, it's not in a statute. Congress hasn't said to them, hey, SEC, um, go figure out what the right way to regulate these assets is. That's, that's Congress's job. Mm. Um, so the SEC is doing sort of what you would expect them to do given the, the, the tools that they have. Um, and, you know, I'm sure plenty of people would like the SEC just to back off um, or just to, you know, to create broad exemptions um, from their laws for crypto. I don't think it's realistic to expect that the SEC will do that. Hmm. You know, it's, it's a great point because I understand there's, look, there's a lot of crypto investors who are very angry and upset at the SEC. And it's almost like a PR nightmare because of social media and Twitter and so forth. A lot of anger coming through on, 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 the, on those respective channels. But I understand Chair Genser and the folks at the SEC have a job to do and they're being paid to, to do a job. But uh, I want to get your take on, couldn't you know, Chair Genser be a little, have a little lighter touch? I think he's, he seems to be a bit aggressive. And you know, many of us were hopeful that he was someone who's educated about the technology and the asset class. He, <clears throat> he was teaching about it at MIT, but now it seems he's coming in guns blazing. So I, I'm, I'm, I think, like you said, there's a dichotomy for, for uh, uh, amongst this. And, and I think in, investors are like, well, okay, I understand he doesn't have the proper regulations or clarity from uh, Congress, but why the aggressiveness? And is that a tool that he's using to force Congress to move? You know, what are your thoughts around that? Um, I think he's, no, he, I, I think that he is doing... Um, what you would expect a cop on the beat to do. Um, and, you know, the term aggressive is, is, is somewhat loaded. I mean, um, this, is, this is what the SEC does. Um, this is how the SEC has, has gone after um, participants in the financial services marketplace or in the financial markets uh, you know, for decades. Um, so, you know, by bringing the, 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 the biggest problem, you know, that I, that I see is, um, you know, people use this term regulation by enforcement. Um, uh, and, you know, that's a sort of a shock worn criticism of, 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 of the way the SEC um, um, executes its mandate. Um, But that, you know, the SEC has done that for, for decades. Um, and, and so uh, the people in the crypto space, um, you know, just may not have realized it. <laughs> That's how the SEC operates. Um, uh, and, and, you know, they're getting a, they're getting a, 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 a wake up call. Now, you know, there are, there are things that the SEC um, can do and has done um, that I think you would you would call a little less aggressive. You know, for example, in 2017, instead of bringing an enforcement action against um, uh, Slocket and the Dow, they they put out a report, um, uh, you know, explaining their views on um, on ICOs and explaining how how they analyze whether or not a token is a security. Um, and a funny thing happened after that. I think they, that came out in, in the summer of 2017. And in the few months after publishing the Dow, um, if you look at a chart, ICOs just kept, kept taking place. So even with, when the SEC does come out in a, in a less aggressive fashion and tries to give guidance, it doesn't necessarily have the same impact from their, from their perspective. Um, um, so, you know, the, the, they, they will, I think, in some cases, give guidance. Um, um, but at that point, it's really up to the market to listen to what they're saying. Um, and that kind of didn't happen um, um, after the Dow. It took, it took a, a few months before the message got through that, you know, hmm, the SEC's onto these ICO things. For sure. um, and I think you might, you know, the DeFi is something that, you know, everybody is grappling grappling with right now um you know everybody's trying to figure out you know exactly which which rules apply um, um you know there are 
maximalists who um, you know would would try to um, would would try to posit that um, uh, you know these things aren't regular regulatable and, and and can't be regulated shouldn't be regulated. Um, you know, I think it would be quite helpful for the SEC to to to, to give us a peek into their thinking um, on DeFi. Um, uh, you know, in the same manner that they gave the DAO. But you know, if if the SEC when and if the SEC does sort of you know, deliver this guidance, you know, if it's not in the form of an enforcement action, um, you know, I think people would be be wise to listen to it. Um, but um, you know, again, I think. I think I think we shouldn't be expecting the SEC to solve this problem. I think we have to expect Congress to solve it. Mm. Um, so on that note, you know, you mentioned the ICO uh, rules that were put out and so forth. I, I think there, obviously the big case which we talked about in our previous interview is is the Ripple lawsuit um, around uh, XRP. Uh, part of Ripple's defense is the fair notice. Um, item, the SEC was almost nowhere to be seen in the early days of this asset class. Um, and I understand that it was still, you know, very young and uh, things were, everybody's still trying to figure out what's going on. But do you feel the SEC should maybe, once again, be a little light-handed because there was not this clear roadmap? Yes, there was the Howie test, but we talked about it's not it can't really be used to, you know, uh, provide guidance for decentralized networks with tokens that are distributed globally. Um, you know, do you, do you think Ripple's fair notice defense is a strong one, um, and as well as for other projects that are out there, maybe Ethereum um, and, and and the others that are were around before the SEC, you know, started taking action? Yeah, look, I'm I'm very sympathetic to that argument. Um, you know, it's a it's a basic. Um, due process argument, um, uh, you know, Ripple was um, in operation for, uh, the, the, the Ripple network was, was, was operating for years um, before the last minute um, filing of a lawsuit against, you know, against them. Um, I think there's also a question, um, I'm not entirely sure what the SEC is planning on proving in the in the XRP litigation either. Um, uh, you know, I don't know, for example, whether whether the SEC will set out to prove that that Ripple is or that XRP is today a security, or if they are instead, um, you know, tying everything back to um, uh, uh, you know activities that went on in the 2012, 2013 sort of timeframe. Um, so I, I, I continue to be um, uh, uh, perplexed at why the SEC decided to, to bring that case. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, it, as, as you and I discussed, you know, a few months ago, um, the SEC has a lot riding, you know, their entire regulatory project could be, uh, could be basically shut down um, if they lose on the merits here. Um, and I continue to think there's a pretty good chance that they will lose on the merits. Wow. Um, how do you feel the law? I don't know if you've been keeping up with the lawsuit details and the orders by the judge and things along those lines. How do you feel that things have been going so far? Well, you know, look, I, I, I think it's too early to know. Um, you know, what we've seen over the course of the past year has been, you know, a series of, of discovery disputes and discovery um, issues. Um, you know, I think that, that these are, you know, obviously vitally important to the, to the parties, to the SEC and to the, and to the defendants. Um, but, um, you know, in terms of, uh, you know, trying to draw out the broader lessons of the case, um, you know, I think these are little skirmishes. Um, the judge, um, the, the judge hasn't yet begun to rule on the substance um, um, of, of what the SEC is saying and the substance of what Ripple Labs is saying. And to me, that's that's where the interest is going to be, mm. unless they settle it. So I, I think, um, you know, there's, there's some interesting parts to this lawsuit because 
to, to what you mentioned before, you're trying to prove XRP today's security, but I think most would agree that, okay, maybe in the 2012 to 2013, 2014 era, um, that was when it could be could have been considered a security. Um, and maybe Ripple would have to pay a fine for that period. But to say XRP today's is security um, seems unreasonable. And then you ha have attorney John Deaton coming into the picture and he's representing about like 65,000 plus XRP holders, uh, including myself. Um, and th there's that aspect to it. What do you think about what's happening? And once again, this is all the, the community folks on social media and, and holders of the token rising up saying, hey, we're not happy about this. And this seems ridiculous. Well, look, I, I think it it is, um, you know, pretty compelling um, uh, uh, to to have investors in the asset um, you know, whose interests the SEC um, is is there to protect. I think it's very compelling that 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 the the investors themselves, um, you know, are showing a lot of um, unhappiness and concern here. Um, uh, but it's really, you know, that's that's atmospherics. Um, you know, it's something that 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 could um, matter to the judge. It could it could cause the judge to to scratch their head and um, say, you know, what's what's going on here. Um, but you know, at the at the end of the day, um, I, I don't think um, uh, the anger of the XRP community is going to um, have uh, 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 any sort of deciding role in 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 what the judge determines in terms of whether or not XRP is a security. Um, you know, unfortunately, the judge is going to be applying. The Howey test, you know, the test that was developed in 1946, um, and you know, it's pretty clear, I think, you know, <laughs> that the Howey test, you know, is the test. Um, but that's a problem, you know, and that's that's why I keep circling back to this um, this notion that 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 unfortunately we can't rely on 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 the, the SEC or the securities laws. Um, to get us out of this um, cul-de-sac that we found ourselves in. Um, if you look at what Howie, um, if you look at really what Howie did, um, um, all, how, all Howie did was look at um, uh, an investment scheme in a Florida orange grove. I mean, the, the, the promoters in Howie were, were going up to you know, dentists in New Jersey and saying, you, you give me 500 bucks, um, I will um, uh, develop an orange grove, uh, harvest the oranges, sell them and give you a profit. That's clearly an equity investment. Mm -hmm. um, the Howie promoters didn't say, um, I'm selling you common stock, but everything that they did was the same as if they had sold them common stock. And all the Supreme Court did in Howie was, was, was look at a clear equity investment, uh, maybe preferred equity or maybe a, maybe a debt, depending on how it's structured. And, and they said, yeah, that's investing activity. Um, that's what the securities laws were designed to, to regulate. And so let's, let's develop a test um, uh, that's flexible enough um, you know, that can, it can apply to this sort of ordinary, um, you know, equity capital raise, which is what the promoters and how we were doing. Um, and now here we are 80 years later, 70 years later, um, you know, taking those principles and applying them to something that, you know, may not be equity capital raising, you know, um, these tokens that I'm, you know, selling, I, um, if, if my if my if if the business already exists and I don't need to raise capital to to, to develop the business, um, but I'm going to sell you these tokens, um, you know, for use in in, in the business. Um, why should we be applying the securities laws to that kind of activity? Um, 
uh, I think we shouldn't be applying those securities laws to that kind of activity. Um, but if you're the SEC, you know, there's an old saying, um, uh, you know, if, if you're a hammer, every problem looks like a nail. Mm. That's sort of what the SEC is stuck with. So, you know, we can fulminate against Chairman Gensler um, and the SEC and, and complain that they're being um, aggressive, but this is what they're set up to do. Um, uh, and, and I can guarantee you that, um, you know, if we have a Bernie Madoff situation in the crypto markets, or had we had Mount Gox, frankly, in the United States, um, uh, and, 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 and retail investors lose a lot of money in crypto, the first person that the Congress is going to call up to Capitol Hill to grill is going to be Chair Gensler. Sure. And, 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 and the congressmen and women are going to uh, yell and scream and pound the table and act all righteous and want to know, you know, why was the SEC asleep at the wheel? You know, why was the cop not on the beat? I can guarantee you that will happen the minute we have um, uh, a, 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 a big set of investor losses um, uh, in, in the crypto market. And... You know, uh, good sense will prevent Chair Gensler in that situation from turning the tables on Congress and saying, you know, you guys have been aware of what's going on in this market for the last decade as well, and, and you've done nothing to clarify our authority, um, and, you've done, and you've done nothing to, uh, to try to figure out how this new asset class should be regulated. Um, he won't say that um, because he's 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 too smart a, a politician to, to say that. But that would be the question I would be asking Congress. Mm. So the time is now. But con Congress really ought to get out ahead of this thing. But you know, unfortunately, what we usually see with financial services regulation is they wait they wait for a crisis. You know, whether that's um, uh, a, a financial accounting crisis like we had in the early 2000s with, that led to Sarbanes-Oxley or, or the financial crisis that we had in, in 2008 that led to the passage of the Dodd-Frank Act. Unfortunately, I'm afraid that, that the Congress will wait until we have some sort of really bad meltdown um, in the crypto markets before they finally um, um, ask themselves, um, hey, how should we be how should we be regulating this new asset class? Um, boy, that, that, that's unfortunate. And, and I'm hoping, and I don't know if you've heard about this, but there's supposedly a crypto executive order coming from President Biden. Uh, it's been rumored for the past month or so. Maybe we see it by March. Maybe that is the catalyst that rallies the troops here, uh, the different agencies, and maybe Congress starts moving. Any thoughts on that? I, you know, I, I hope so. I, I would imagine, though, that that, that um, well, I'm, spe I'm speculating. I, I know that there's a lot of, um, uh, of concern about, um, you know, how crypto is, is being used um, uh, in sort of criminal ways, um, uh, you know, whether that's, uh, you know, ransomware payments or, um, you know, you know, things like that. Um, crypto is also, you know, suddenly um, uh, uh, of major concern to the banking regulators, um, uh, uh, you know, who are wondering, um, you know, for example, whether we should be, whether the United States should be issuing a digital dollar um, and what the impact would be um, on our, um, uh, on our uh, economy. Um, if, you know, if, if, if private parties start offering, um, uh, uh, you know, stable coins sort of on a, on, on a massive scale, you know, what does that do to the banking system? What does that, what does that do to the, um, um, you know, to, to the payment services industry? Um, I suspect that um, that will be a large focus of um, anything that comes out of the Biden administration, um, uh, and I, I, you know, there there may be some language in it about you know, tasking the federal regulators to um, uh, you know to work together to to, to make sure that this um, 
incredibly important space is 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 um, subject to oversight without sort of regulatory gaps. Um, but I'm, I'm not expecting um, the Biden administration to to come up with a new regulatory paradigm. Um, I hope I'm wrong. I would love it if they would. Um, uh, you know, I would love it if they would they would hand Congress um, a well designed um, draft that uh, uh, that that lays out principles for the regulation of this industry that that. Um, you know, doesn't result in, in shutting the industry down. Um, but my my guess is that 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 the the administration's proposal will have more to do with these um, you know sort of issues around uh, uh, cybercrime and uh, than and, and and banking rather than the securities laws. Sure, um, I, I'm hopeful that you know things they get it right sometime this year. Um, because there are folks who are leaving the United States and some who want to come to the United States but are hitting the brakes there because they just don't want to fall into, under this regulatory scrutiny. Um, while in, in other major markets, there is the clarity around what's a security, what's a currency, and so forth. You know, Do you feel the, the United States is in danger of losing the, 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 the how, should I, how should I put it? The, losing the, the driver's seat on the innovation here uh, if we don't get it, this thing right soon you know yeah no I, I think that's you know that that's definitely a, a, a problem for us um, you know to have the initiative um, you know to, to having the initiative taken away from us because um, uh, because of the uncertain regulatory environment is is, is obviously a, a factor um, but you have to remember you know at the end of the day we are the the wealthiest economy in the world, um, uh, we, one of the largest uh, populations in the world. Um, you know, I, I think that um, there's going to there's going to be a crypto market in the United States. Um, you know, whether whether it's something that, that develops now or something that develops in the future, um, and and you know, I think that the 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 the, the competitive threat that that we are going to see and that we are seeing already from outside the United States is real, um, but I don't think that alone is really going to make um, the difference in terms of of getting the regulators to focus on it um, or getting the getting the Congress to focus on it. Um, um, so it's 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 had the brain drains happening, the 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 activity is happening, um, um, but that alone I don't think is going to make Congress. Um, step up and pay attention here. Hmm. Uh, let's circle back to the Ripple lawsuit. Um, I, I had a few more questions there. Now, this may be, uh, Joe, a, an awkward question to ask you, but I have to ask it because there is a lot of video clips, a lot of connections, documents, and so forth. Um, you know, why do you think Jay Clayton handled the lawsuit the way he did on his way out? And in addition to that, there, there's potential conflicts of interest with Jay Clayton and William Hinman with regards to the Ethereum, uh, not a security speech. Uh, what can you tell us about that from your perspective? Um, I mean, obviously I, I am aware of the, uh, the, uh, the allegations around that. Um, I, I, I don't put a lot of stock in it, honestly. Um, uh, it's it's just it's just not how um, the SEC operates. It's not how those two gentlemen in particular <laughs> operate. Um, I, I I I view those um, allegations as uh, conspiracy theories. Um, you know, it's the the status of, of Ethereum um, as a security. Um, like the status of Bitcoin uh, as a security and, and any, any other sort of asset that the staff is looking at um, uh, is, is examined by um, a lot of different people um, at the SEC. And these decisions are made by a lot of different people at the SEC. Um, and the idea that either Bill Hinman or Jay Clayton, um, uh, you know, had an undisclosed financial motivation for 
going in one direction or going in another direction. I, I just I just think that's unfounded speculation by by um, by by people who don't really have a clear understanding of how the SEC operates. Frankly, um, I could be proven completely wrong, obviously, um, and maybe we'll find that that there is some um, you know dark conspiracy going on here. Um, but to me, it's about the same as the QAnon conspiracy. Hmm. Um, but why do you think, you know, I understand the Bitcoin um, situation, and I think for the most part, for everybody in the market, that's pretty clear, but Ethereum had an ICO and so did many other tokens, many who are issued on top of the Ethereum blockchain had ICOs. Is this a fault of the SEC that, okay, we gave clarity to Bitcoin, Ethereum, we said is not a security, the market took that and ran with it. Now, Chair Genser is not really addressing that anymore. You know, he does not want to talk about that. So what about the rest of the crypto market? I mean, everybody else is kind of left hanging here. Why, why do you think that Ethereum was given that uh, clarity? I think the staff or the, I think the SEC was, was really struggling um, to, to, to define a line between what's a security and, and, and what's not a security. Um, and, you know, they, because they, I think they understand, they, they clearly understand the, the, the problem that I described earlier, which is, you know, if it's a security, we regulate it out of existence. If it's not a security, it's, it's anything goes. Um, they, they clearly understand that, that problem. Um, uh, and they, they, they really seized on this, this notion of decentralization. You know, they really seized on this notion of, um, and, and, and what they mean by that is, you know, is there any identifiable third party out there who a holder of the token would be relying on um, uh, to, to get a return on their investment? And, um, you know, I think they, they, they certainly looked at Bitcoin uh, and it seems pretty clear that there is no such person out there. Um, uh, now, at any rate, um, and I think they looked at Ethereum and concluded that you know at this at this point um, the asset is used um, uh, for so many different purposes by so many different players that there's really no one person out there um, uh, on whom we can pin responsibility um, for providing the disclosures that that investors need. Um, Again, that this is this is this is it's, it's all a problem of our own making. Um, sure. I, I don't think we necessarily should be saying that decentralization um, should be the touchstone. Um, and this is, you know, one of the one of the concerns I have about, um, you know, Commissioner Purse's approach. Um, yeah, I believe, as I understand her approach you would have sort of a three year grace period to get your network to be sufficiently decentralized, you know, at which point um, uh, it would no longer, your, your token would no longer be a security. Um, again, if, if we have to work within the current framework, then I get it and I understand, um, I understand that approach. I just don't think we should be dealing with that, that current, with, with that framework. Um, and, you know, why, why should centralization be a problem um, if, if the asset doesn't otherwise have the hallmarks of a security um, yeah. and, and the asset doesn't otherwise raise the same regulatory concerns? I mean, why should we really care um, if, if, um, if there's a central, um, if there's a, you know, if, 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 if there's a central um, actor there, you know, Take an easy example. Um, uh, I rely on uh, the good smart folks at Apple um, every single day. Now, when I, I'm using an iPad right now, when I use my iPhone, you know, I'm, I'm relying on the folks at Apple um, to you know, deliver me high quality hardware, and then to keep that hardware functioning um, and, and to, to constantly you know, be, be 
pushing um, you know updates to me to improve my operating system and to you know to ferret out bugs and to close trap doors. That doesn't make my iPhone a security or my iPad. It doesn't make my iPad a security. So why 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 should we fetishize centralization and decentralization in, in the security space? But again, you know, if you're if you're the SEC um, and you, you've you've got your you've got your set of rules that you're you know, charged with enforcing and, and that's what that's the way those rules are drafted. Um, you know, I, I'm not not sure what else you can do. Mm. But Congress, again, Congress could come along and say, look, um, centralization is not going to be the touchstone here. Um, instead, um, the touchstone is going to be um, what is this asset? How is this asset used? How can investors um, um, be harmed using this asset? And what kind of information should investors get and, and, and who should provide that information? Congress is perfectly capable of doing that. Yeah, uh, and I'm hoping they, they act soon. Um, and and uh, I wanted to ask, um, and you may have addressed it earlier, um, how do you see the SEC Ripple lawsuit uh, re resolving, um, you know, your, your predictions? Um, do you see a resolution this year or a settlement this year? And, and what's the outcome that, that you think? I mean, lit litigation is inherently unknowable. Um, you, you know, they, they, they've, they've been, um, you know, very active um, discovery disputes. Um, uh, the judges or the magistrate judge, I think, who's been overseeing the case has made a number of rulings on those motions. Um, you know, at, at some point, they're going to have to start filing briefs. Um, and... Um, you know, we're only in in uh, in February of this year. I'm I'm, I'm hopeful that that uh, I'm, I'm hopeful that we'll see some real substantive action on this case um, over the course of this year. But again, lit litigation is inherently slow, um, and uh, and judges move slowly. Um, and uh, you know, this it's even even now it's only at the district court phase, and and I think. Um, Almost no matter what happens um, at the district court level, I think you can expect to see you know appeals. So I wouldn't be banking on on a tidy resolution of this case um, over the course of this year. Um, uh, settlement is always a possibility that could that could happen um, out of the blue. Um, uh, um, um, you yeah, know, but 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 but. You know, from an outsider's perspective, which is all I have on it, um, you know, both sides seem to be pretty, pretty dug into it right now. Mm. Um, let's talk about the SEC going after lending platforms. So they had blocked Coinbase lending. Um, Coinbase CEO tweeted out some things about the SEC, uh, not so flattering comments. Um, BlockFi got hit with a fine. Uh, I think it was 100 million. Um, Nexo, it was reported yesterday, was pumping the brakes on offerings and services to U.S. customers. Um, I don't know if you can give us a take on why are these lending platforms being targeted in this way? And I understand the SEC has a job to do. I understand we have to stop scams and protect investors. But these platforms, to my knowledge, have not been carrying out fraud or, or scamming people. They didn't do anything. They're not doing ICOs. It's just crypto lending. And people are earning um, very high interest and in yield. What are your thoughts on, on the entire situation? Well, you know, I, I, I wouldn't necessarily even think of those cases as, as being um, crypto in nature. Um, I mean, uh, you know, they, they clearly involve company, companies that are active in the crypto space. But I, I, I think the, 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 broader message that I suspect the SEC is, is trying to um, is, is trying to send um, you know, has to do with um, the provision of, 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 of financial services um, and you know we, we have a completely um, fragmented approach to financial services regulation um, uh, uh, 
which other countries don't suffer from. Um, uh, I think there, you know, there, there probably are benefits to our approach, but, but there's, there's also um, uh, some real drawbacks. And one of those drawbacks is it's often just not clear um, uh, what set of rules apply um, um, to, to the provision of, of, of financial services. Um, and, and different, different regulators um, can often, in the United States, can often make um, you know, plausible or credible claims um, to, to having jurisdiction of a particular activity. But from the point of view of the, of the, the actor, from the point of view of the business that's providing the service, it can often be maddening um, you know, to figure out which regulatory regime applies. Um, and you know, as long as we have that, um, that uh, um, lack of certainty, um, it's going to be possible for different regulators to, you know, to, to, to stake a claim. So, you know, it, in the cases that you mentioned, you know, I suspect that, um, you know, that, that if, if, the, if the retail, um, uh, if the retail investors, you know, were, were using um, uh, gold bullion or were, were using uh, Air Jordans or using some other um, commodity to earn those returns, um, I suspect you would have the SEC, um, you know, sort of coming in and taking the same position that they that that, that, that they're taking. So I, I that's why I say I'm I'm I don't look at, at at those cases as as being crypto as much as they are, um, you know, companies, um, uh, you know, sort of thinking about you know, different sorts of financial services, um, and you know. Just because it's a financial service doesn't mean the SEC ought to regulate it. Just because it's a financial service doesn't mean that um, you know that there has to be a security there. Um, um, but with the, the SEC can use the tools that it has, um, you know, sometimes pretty creatively to 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 get you know to, to go after that activity. Um, again, more more. You know, all of this sort of, you know, I keep coming back to the same refrain, um, you know, that, that, that the one actor in our system who can actually provide some clarity here and say, you know, this kind of activity is going to be regulated by the banking regulators. This kind of activity is not going to be regulated at the federal level at all. We're going to allow the states to regulate this activity. This act activity should be regulated by our commodity futures regulators. The one actor in our system who can do that is Congress and specifically the House Financial Services Committee and the Senate Banking Committee. Hmm. Uh, it comes back to to that one entity, um, this whole mess that we're in. <laughs> um, it, 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 it does. It, 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 it really does. And, 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 you know, we can rail against, um, you know, the regulators and we can say that the regulators are being unfair and are being aggressive. But, you know, they're executing the rule book that was given to them by Congress. Hmm. Um, I, I think that is certainly a call to action for the listeners and viewers uh, to start contacting their, their representatives. Yeah, start contacting your representatives. You know, let your, let your representatives know um, uh, that, you know, that you have an interest in this. Um, and, uh, you know, it, it's what you learned in the second grade, you know. Contact your representatives. For sure. Um, I wanted to touch on a Bitcoin ETF uh, situation. So Bitcoin, of course, is not a security. Um, the SEC has approved Bitcoin futures ETFs. But the question lies, where is the approval for the spot ETF? And what is the hesitation? And I've seen congressmen tweeting at Gary Genser and the SEC about this. And um, a lot of folks in the industry, um, e even those with solid reputations and, and who've been around a very long time, like uh, BNY Mellon and Van Act and, and these folks are 
trying to get a spot ETF, but they're getting roadblocked. Why do, why do you think uh, the SEC has not proved a spot ETF as yet? Well, I, I need to uh, give a, a little bit of disclosure of my own. I, Grayscale is one of my clients, and I wrote a letter to the SEC on behalf of Grayscale um, in which um, I explain our view that the approval of um, a futures-based product in the Bitcoin market um, really should um, should mean that 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 uh, that a spot product should be approved as well. Um, you know, I think the the, the risks that the SEC has. Um, has relied upon um, uh, in, in, in heretofore not approving um, a, uh, a spot uh, Bitcoin ETF. I believe those risks are substantially similar to the risks um, that are inherent in a, in a futures ETF product. And, and so if, if you're going to approve the futures product, it seems to me that, that you can't um, you can't discriminate against the spot product. Um, so we've we've presented those arguments to the SEC, and we're we, you know we're looking forward to uh, uh, to you know, to the SEC considering those and 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 and, and hopefully uh, and hopefully agreeing with our analysis there. For sure, um, you know it, it. The other day, I was just looking at Fidelity, and uh, you know they're they got their spot ETF approved in Canada and it's listed in the Toronto stock exchange. And I'm like, why is this not happening in the United States? Uh, I mean, this is, this is ridiculous at this point. And, and these companies are going to other markets now. Yes. Like we talked about U S is the largest capital market. Um, and, and obviously we've got a lot of things going well here, but it's just, it's just painful to watch that happen. Uh, yeah, I mean, look, we're 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 the United States, and we take our own time, you know, and we don't. Um, and uh, you know, regulators in other jurisdictions are going to move um, faster than us. Um, regulators in other jurisdictions are going to move a lot slower than us. Um, so I think that the, the the Canadian decision obviously got a lot of people's attention. Uh, uh, it's a regulatory framework that's frankly very similar to ours, um, uh, and and you know I'm 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 sure the uh, the uh, the folks down at the SEC headquarters are well aware of what's going on uh, 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 um, uh, to the north, um, but uh, they're they're not gonna they're, they're not gonna move because of. Uh, a regulator in another jurisdiction has, has made a decision. I mean, if, eventually we will get to a place where um, eventually there will be spot Bitcoin ETFs. Um, uh, you know, eventually the SEC will get comfortable um, enough with the market um, uh, eventually. And, and, you know, I, I, and, and we may, we may be there already, you know, it, it may be something that we see within, within the next few months. Um, but uh, uh, you're, you're going to get really frustrated if 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 you um, look around at what's going on in other jurisdictions and, and, and ask yourself why we don't have that here. For sure. Um, a few more questions, and we'll wrap it up. Um, you know, what are your thoughts on how you know the crypto market has grown significantly, and we're seeing global adoption. It seems more um, countries are looking to regulate versus banning. Uh, you know, you have El Salvador adopting Bitcoin as a legal tender. Uh, all of a sudden here in the States, uh, you have different folks introducing bills to make Bitcoin a legal tender. I don't know if that's going to happen, but it's nevertheless interesting. And then you have NFTs, a branch off of the crypto asset class that are booming. Um, you know, what is your take on how things have grown and, and maybe how do you see things growing in the next three to five years? Um, it, it's funny because I think when you and I last spoke, um, which I think was in maybe about a year ago, I was just only dimly aware of what an NFT was. Um, 
and uh, you know, and then two months later, you couldn't, you couldn't, you couldn't go into a restaurant without hearing, you know, the guy at the next table, you know, explaining to his date, um, um, uh, you know, what an NFT is and how they're going to make so much money off of it, right? Um, I am. I have been waiting for the SEC to say something about NFTs. Mm. Um, uh, you know, there are, and I've, I've heard a lot of, um, you know, I've, I've heard a lot of, of, of arguments on both sides of, you know, what makes an NFT a, a security under the securities laws, which kind of, what kind of NFTs are not securities under the securities laws. Um, I can assure you that that there are a number of people down at the commission um, who are looking really carefully at that space. And um, it's surprised me a little bit that here we are in February of 2022. And I'm not really aware of, of any public statements that the SEC has made um, giving their views on how, if at all, the, the federal securities laws apply to NFTs. Um, and I think, frankly, it would be quite useful if they, if, if, if they would give the market some guidance. Um, but so that's, that's one area that I think, you know, one space that I think, you know, we should all be watching. And I mentioned earlier, DeFi is another space that I think we should all be watching in terms of, you know, the SEC, um, uh, you know, giving us, at least giving us the benefit of their thinking, whether, whether we are going to agree with their thinking or not, I, you know, we'll, we'll have to see what it is first, but it would be very useful for them to actually tell us what they're thinking. For sure. Um, what are your thoughts on central bank digital currencies? Uh, the, the governments are taking the blockchain tech, um, which was created under Bitcoin, and then now they're tokenizing fiat currencies on top of it. Uh, there, are, there is dialogue happening in the United States. How does that align with our constitution, with the right to privacy and things like that? But it seems every central bank around the globe is doing this. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? I mean, look, it seems to me to be a, 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 a natural, um, you know, a, a natural evolution. Um, uh, the, 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 the U.S. dollar has to remain the world's reserve currency um, for the United States to, to continue to have the, the economic dominance um, and the economic influence that it has today. I mean, it's so interesting. I mean, we're, 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 we're watching what's going on in, in, in Ukraine and, and, and Russia right now. And um, it looks like a major part of the U.S. response to that um, is going to be the imposition of economic sanctions. Um, the United States is one of the few uh, countries in the world that actually has the authority, actually has the ability to um, impose economic sanctions in a way that um, uh, you know other governments um, have to take notice, um, and and we're only able to do that um, because of the primacy of our currency and the primacy of our financial system. And I'm quite sure that um, you know Treasury Secretary Yellen. Um, uh, and uh, Fed Chair uh, Powell, um, you know, are, are both aware of, 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 of the technology um, and are both aware of the need to, to make sure that the United States maintains the leading edge um, uh, with, with that technology. Because if there's a digital renminbi or a digital ruble, um, you know, that people um, uh, widely adopt and start using, that's going to be a big problem for the United States at some point down the road. So, you know, I think um, whether, whether, whether um, the digital currency is something that is um, sponsored by um, the federal government or whether the federal government, um, you know, allows private parties um, or you know, facilitates private parties in, in, in offering it, I, you know, I think we'll, we'll get there at some point. For sure. Um, okay, wrap up questions. 
Um, first is if you could create your own metaverse, what would the theme be about? <laughs> um, <laughs> um, what would the theme of my metaverse be? Um, it would it would involve um, uh, uh, pools and lounge chairs and um, and 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 adult beverages. <laughs> sounds sounds relaxing and uh, something I would do as well. Uh, some rapid fire questions. Favorite food. Favorite food. Um, jalapeno peppers. Uh, favorite musician or band. Um, at the moment, um, the weekend. Uh, favorite movie. At the moment, um, I really like the, um, the dog movie with the power of the dog. <laughs> uh, favorite book? I'm reading a great biography of, um, of uh, the, the painter uh, Francis Bacon right now. Mm. And finally, um, what do you do for fun as a hobby pastime? Uh, I spend far too much time um, scrolling through Instagram these days. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> well, you should come check out crypto Twitter. Uh, <laughs> you know what? I, 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 I play around a lot on crypto Twitter. Um, uh, just try to figure out what the hell's going on. Yeah. <laughs> Joe, uh, pleasure chatting with you. Thank you so much for joining me today. It was good talking. Thank you.